You're watching Newsnight Nigeria here on Arise News in the nation's capital of Uja. My name is Amaka Ode. And I am Christian Ogodo. All right. All right. The Nigerian Automotive Development Plan is a blueprint that will ensure the sustainable growth and development of the Nigerian automotive industry. The plan will create the enabling environment for the industry to develop through relevant investor-friendly policies and impact positively on the employment figures of the country. However, legislation backing the plan has stalled since President Buhari declined accent to the bill with some experts citing important tax-related controversies as a reason for Mr. Buhari's refusal. Well, to the stakeholders, the president's decision to assent to the bill was an anticlimax in the efforts to attract foreign direct investment FDI through the original equipment manufacturers into the industry. Now, there is one more push by stakeholders to rework the bill and return it to the National Assembly. If passed into law, it will considerably boost Nigeria's underutilized domestic vehicle production capacity and give the needed boost to the economy. What exactly are the expectations? Well, for more on this, we're now being joined in the studio by Jelani Aliu. He is the Director General of uh, the National Automotive uh, Design and Development uh, Council. And he himself designed uh, a famous uh, car, talking about the world acclaimed electric car the for Chevrolet yeah. Volt. <laughs> and of course, he did that for General Motors. Not forgetting the Pontiac G6 and several Opels, and he joins us in the studio. Thank you so much for being here. Thank and uh, quickly, uh, before we go into all of uh, the bill and what is in there, um, one would want to ask, what is the difference between this bill and the automotive policy that is already in place in the country since 2014? Yes, um, it's good to be here. Uh, actually, a general expansion of uh, that description would be what we are implementing generally is a National Automotive Industrial Development Plan. This is a whole ecosystem of uh, programs and initiatives that will support the automotive sector. So out of that, a component of it is the auto policy. And this is, these are specific fiscal incentives to support local production and discourage uh, the importation of vehicles. And the reason why this current administration is so much interested in the uh, success of the automotive sector is because of its ability to create thousands of direct and hundreds of thousands of indirect jobs. So that is why we are now at the stage of reviewing the old policy, send it back as an executive bill to the National Assembly so that it can come out and be assented to by the president. Well, it was passed by the 8th Assembly, but the president did not put pen to paper. This time around, what are you doing differently to really make sure it, it hits the nail on the head to get the president's attention? Yes, that original policy had been in the works for a number of years. We all met it on the ground. Uh, we worked to further develop it. But what we now have is an opportunity to put forward an auto policy that is in tune with the latest developments in the global and regional automotive uh, uh, industry. Well, I know that uh, in that uh, bill and part of you know, uh, your council's policy, like you said, is to help create a value chain in the automotive uh, manufacturing sector and trying to make Nigeria a big market. But there are certain constraints. Mm -hmm. You don't have a flat sheet industry, so you're still mm -hmm. going to be importing key components of, of you know, uh, the car making or manufacturing this thing. Mm -hmm. Then secondly, uh, very quickly too, what kind of synergy mm -hmm. does your council have with agencies like NOTAP, that is a national office for technology acquisition mm -hmm. and promotion, because you're going to acquire some new technology here mm -hmm. in the automotive industry, and NASENI, the National mm -hmm. Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure. Yes. The automotive industry has evolved to such a stage that uh, no one company or no one nation any longer produces all the components that go into a vehicle. Uh, so a vehicle made in country A has components coming from all across the world. So as Nigeria moves forward the production of vehicles, uh, we are heading towards uh, creating an industry that incorporates the support of uh, other countries and regions in the supply chain of uh, components. 
Um, and we are uh, working closely with other government agencies. Uh, we met with a number of them uh, just this Monday uh, at the ministry, and we are having a stakeholders meeting on Friday where we, we have invited uh, public and private stakeholders to sit and discuss on the policy, get input, so that we get the most effective mm. uh, uh, policy in place. What about looking inwards? Do we have companies in the country that are already making some of this part? So that way we don't have to source from you're, elsewhere. You're talking of uh, Newi, for example, <laughs> which I know your, yes. is in your policy, uh, setting yes. manufacturing hubs, Lagos, mm. uh, Newi, Kaduna, and uh, Zaria, you know, for testing and the rest. Yes. But are you, okay, what kind of collaborative efforts does your council have with local manufacturers mm. like an in Inewi, which is mm. the industrial mm. hub of this country, whether yes. we like it or not, and Innocent, that is uh, pioneer their yeah. private uh, manufacturing. A lot of collaboration, and Innocent, uh, the company, uh, is uh, something we're very proud of because uh, just uh, about uh, two months ago, Innocent uh, introduced an, a semi automated assembly line that would allow uh, that company to reduce the cost of vehicles uh, that will go through that assembly line by at least 20%. Uh, so we've been given a lot of uh, support to Innocent, and like I said, we're very proud of what they are doing. Uh, they are putting together a number of different types of vehicles, SUVs, pickups, buses. Uh, Honda uh, just recently, uh, actually last year, uh, introduced the Honda HRV that they produce in Ota, and to prove that that vehicle is configured for Nigeria, they drove it all the way from Ota in uh, Ogun, State. Ogun State to, to uh, Abuja. Uh, we also have Peugeot that introduced a Peugeot pickup last year. This is 14 years after they stopped the production of the Peugeot pickup. Mm. So there's quite a bit of activity in the automotive sector in Nigeria. Vehicles being manufactured here, people being employed directly, and by extension also we believe at least 50,000 people are benefiting from the current uh, wow. automotive production uh, uh, capacity in the country. Uh, but infrastructural challenges is a major issue in Nigeria for any sector really. Mm. But we have to talk about electric cars because the world <laughs> is moving and Nigeria has to move with the world really. And I do mm. know that you are yes. sort of like an expert in that field. Nigeria, yeah. electric cars, are we looking in that direction anytime soon? We are very much. We're working towards putting together an electric vehicle policy to support the production and usage of electric vehicles. And to help us really understand that technology, what we're doing is we're doing an electric vehicle pilot program that we hope to soon uh, deploy. We're working with the three universities, uh, University of Nigeria in Suka, uh, University of Lagos, and Usman Nafodio University. Uh, so what we're doing is we're building uh, uh, charging for solar-powered electric charging stations, and we'll be deploying electric vehicles in these uh, campuses to understand the opportunities. How soon are we looking are we to see the soon? electric cars? Because all of this is sounding really good, By but the how soon? second quarter of this year, yes. So we're in the process of bringing in those vehicles. We're also in the process of, of building uh, those uh, electric vehicle charging stations. Because I believe we really need to expose our young, our youth, to mm. the most advanced technology. I say when you open them up to these uh, types of advanced and exciting technologies, you never know what they may come, come up, with. up with. Yeah, you, you, in, in, your, in your bill or uh, some of the overviews from your council is, you know, the problem of uh, importing second-hand vehicles into Nigeria and what it is costing um, taxpayers or the economy, rather, yeah. over mm -hmm. 400 billion era. And you say uh -huh. with a Nigerian manufactured cars, mm -hmm. that cost can be reduced to 100 billion. How is this uh, going to be achieved? Well, when you have local production, uh, you're keeping most of that money here because you're creating jobs, so you're paying people within the country. Uh, and I believe we have uh, uh, a labor, uh, cost of labor that is uh, very uh, competitive uh, with almost anywhere in the world. So we are looking at leveraging that to empower those manufacturers to produce locally. And then when you saw some of your components here, which were in uh, close talks with potential component manufacturers from around the world who have demonstrated they could do that in their home countries to come and do the same here in Nigeria. And of course there are, for now, nine auto manufacturing companies that assemble vehicles in Nigeria. But some of these companies will tell you that Nigerians don't really buy brand new vehicles. Mm -hmm. And not because they don't want to, it's quite expensive. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about vehicle financing as obtainable anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. How are you looking to, you know, 
fix this challenge? Yes, we're working closely with uh, uh, primarily three banks to begin with, uh, Jaiz, Zenith, and Wema. And just uh, recently, we've gotten approval from our ministry to go forward with uh, a vehicle finance scheme. This would uh, allow Nigerians to put down just about 10% and drive off with a brand new vehicle and pay over five years, 60 months. So we hope that this is just the beginning. We have uh, quite a, a number of billions of uh, Naira in that program, and we hope it will grow because of the uh, interest that we have seen already from the federal government itself. Okay, have you taken into consideration, because I know one of the major components in uh, autom the automotive industry is uh, rubber. Mm -hmm. And the rubber industry in Nigeria, particularly in the South-South, or mm -hmm. Niger Delta, mm -hmm. is really been de uh, decimated. Mm -hmm. uh, are you going to come up with a policy or liaise with the other government agencies about replanting and regenerating this uh, subsector of the industry? Yes, we're doing at least uh, three things. The first is this policy will address that to further support local production by sort of discouraging importation of, you know, fully built tires. So we'll, we'll do that with policy. We'll also work even closely. We're building three automotive industrial parks uh, in Inewi, uh, Kaduna, and uh, uh, Ibadan. So we hope these will be central locations with all the necessary infrastructure to support plug-in and play by, by potential investors. So we will put even more uh, emphasis on supporting the private sector to go into tire production. Because you know, we as government, we're not in the business of doing business. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes, but our objective, our focus Creating is to support the, the private sector to produce. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I'm excited already because the truth mm -hmm. is, the high unemployment uh, level in the country is just alarming and anything to create jobs for the youth is welcomed by me and getting your brand new cars Very well. and paying just a, a fraction of the entire fee. Looking forward to that and all the best with uh, mm -hmm. all of these plans and even your stakeholders meeting and this bill. Hopefully, uh, the president puts pen to paper. But for now, I would have to say thank you so much. Jelani Aliud, the direct, Director General of the NADDC. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you.